I was just out here starting to film, and this little guy just, this little squirrel, baby squirrel, just came out of nowhere. Hey, buddy. He's so small. He couldn't be more than a week old. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. You hungry? Do you need something? So I just gave this little guy some sunflower seeds and he seems to be enjoying them. He's got some salted sunflower kernels. It's kind of all I had in the house, but he seems pretty happy and he doesn't seem to be foaming at the mouth or any sign of rabies, but he just seems kind of sick and really, really hungry. He immediately started eating them and he was kind of wheezing a little bit and he didn't seem super strong, but he doesn't seem to have any signs of like rabies, but he's definitely really appreciating the sunflower kernels. Now for everyone thinking that I'm gonna take this squirrel into my house and raise it, that is not going to happen. We do not have the space or the means to do that, but you know, the least I can do is give him a little snack and hopefully he kind of comes around and finds some strength and feels better. So for those of you that are new to this channel, we are in what's called the year of diversity. This is a word that we associate with the garden the very beginning of the year, and it's how we want the garden to kind of reflect throughout the growing season. Last year was the year of productivity. We basically saw how much we could produce, and we basically just grew only a few varieties that we knew were huge producers to see just how much we could grow. Uh, two years prior to that uh, was the year of giving. We saw how much we could give away from the garden. We gave away to uh, friends and family in our local soup kitchen in a mission to just bless others with our, with our bounty. Um, we've had so many other different years. We've had year of growth where we uh, expanded the garden. Um, and so it's just a fun little thing that we do. But this year, like I said, is the year of diversity. And so that is an ongoing mission to grow as much biodiversity as possible within our garden space. So with our tomatoes, we have about uh, 50 different varieties of tomatoes. With our sunflowers, we have 10 different varieties of sunflowers. Kale, we have eight different varieties of kale. And our peppers are no exception. We have, uh, I think, 18 or 20 different varieties of peppers. I can't remember at last count what, how much we had because uh, I, I planted them in the beginning of the season and, and uh, I forgot how many we planted. But this is our pepper bed here. And I just wanted to show you just how much production is still coming from our beds. One of the questions that has constantly come up is, you know, Luke, with the year of diversity being, uh, being kind of the, the word of the year, are you noticing any decrease in production from years prior? And I thought that was a really good question because oftentimes, you know, when you try a variety that's lesser known, it's lesser known because it's, you know, maybe less desirable uh, to some people than another variety. And so, the, you know, certain varieties are kind of picked because of production or flavor or shape or size. And we didn't really care about any of those. We just said, how many different varieties can we throw in our garden? And so some varieties are really well-known producers, like our California Wonder Bell Pepper, which is right there, has like 10 bell peppers on a plant this tall. I mean, it's just super productive. And then on the flip side, we also have uh, some really unique peppers in here, um, some holy moly peppers, some uh, Pasilla Bajillo. We have an Ancho. We have, I mean, we have an Anaheim. We have uh, two or three different types of bell peppers, habaneros, ghost peppers. Uh, we have lunchbox peppers. We just have so many incredible peppers in this bed here. And uh, we didn't really care how much they were going to produce. We just wanted to put them in because they were different. But what we're finding is that they're still super productive. So I'm really excited to show you guys everything that's going on. So let's go check it out and, uh, and just see what we're growing. It's absolutely amazing. So this is our pepper bed. Now it is the year of diversity. So we're kind of just cramming things where we can fit them and they have space. And so this bed is kind of being shared between quite a few different plants here. You got the hyssop in the center, peppers kind of on the perimeter. You have uh, the, the giant artichoke in the, the back there. You have watermelons sprawling throughout this, this space here. This cantaloupe sprawling throughout the back there. It's just a, a really cool kind of smorgasbord of plants here, but the watermelons are doing super well too. As a side note, check out the watermelons. Heck yeah, biggest watermelon we've ever grown right there. Charleston gray watermelon right here. Nice, beautiful, nice, beautiful size watermelon. 
still still growing and maturing and uh, Prescott Fon Blanc melon back there so really doing well but we're here to talk about the peppers not about the other stuff in the bed so check this out this is absolutely incredible all right so we're going to start in this corner and kind of just snake our way through the bed the first one I want to start with is the Sunbright pepper this thing is an absolute champ this thing has about 12 huge peppers on it and I mean I say huge because these are organically grown bell peppers they're only going to get you know about this big but that's still pretty big softball size is nice but they're uh they're still growing still maturing you got one two three four there's five a huge one right there nice beautiful size bell pepper is an, another one there forming there's more on this side there's like four or five on this side so they're they're coming along they're really doing super well this is a yellow bell pepper then right here we have uh a the plant that is kind of stealing the show here this starts over here and kind of just has been sprawling i should have staked it up but um it's gotten so heavy with peppers and this is the holy moly pepper and holy moly is right look at the peppers on this thing it's absolutely nuts this thing has lost its mind there are peppers all up and down this plant and these are no small peppers i mean they come all the way over here to this branch here and you can just see how big these peppers are now we use these as a as a drying pepper to make mole it's a mexican dish we absolutely love it's mostly like a, it's kind of like a chocolate curry it's very beautiful very delicious but these peppers are uh just absolutely stunning and they're so productive and this thing is just sprawling throughout here so that's the holy moly pepper it's a wonderful pepper and uh, definitely one of our favorites, but check this out. This one's actually, this one's actually hitting the ground here. I gotta show you this one. Look at how big that pepper is. That is a giant pepper. Then over here we have the Anaheim. The Anaheim is a favorite of ours. We still love growing ones. We've enjoyed growing in the past just because it's the year of diversity doesn't mean we don't throw them in here. So we've got these absolutely incredible Anaheim peppers. And yes, it's a really bright day, so I apologize if the, if the lighting's not the best. I apologize, I'm doing my best, but these here are just incredible. They're huge peppers, and they are loaded down. Um, there are just an absolute insane amount of peppers here on this plant. You can just see the sheer amount of peppers. It's just outrageous. And then coming down here, we have our jalapeno. We picked so many jalapenos on this plant that uh, a lot of them are starting to, um, you know, they're just starting to kind of bounce back where they're producing more, but we've got one here that's ready to pick. Nice, beautiful jalapeno, but we picked about 60 off this plant last week. And so this is just a small plant, but it was loaded down as well. And then coming over here, coming over here, we have the Jimmy Nardello. This is an Italian grilling pepper, just kind of coming into its own here. Beautiful, uh, it actually ripens red, but it's nice and loaded down despite it being a smaller plant. This thing is just laden with fruit, so that's really nice. And then over here we have the Pasilla Bajillo. This is another uh, drying pepper, but as you can see, holy smokes, this thing is super productive. <laughs> it's just about the same as the Holy Moly, but it's, it's smaller than the Holy Moly. And uh, really beautiful, nice black, blackish brown, uh, when, when it's totally ripe, it's kind of a blackish brown pepper, but uh, it's dark green right now, still, still ripening on the, on the plant, but really beautiful. Over here we have the autumn lunchbox pepper. The autumn lunchbox pepper is kind of a, it's a hybrid, but we really wanted to grow some snacks for uh, Geneva. So we got some, got some little, little bell peppers. She absolutely loves snacking on these. And then over here we have the red, this is the, the red lunchbox. This thing is just loaded with fruit. It's incredible. There's probably 40 peppers on this plant. I mean, you can kind of see them throughout here. Just uh, really not, really not doing the, a whole lot of justice for how many peppers are on this plant here. And then over here we have the boot jalokia, the ghost pepper, a pepper that is so mean and so spicy, I will never eat this. So I'm just growing it for sheer novelty but uh, maybe we'll make some hot sauce out of it. I don't know, but it's, it's a mean pepper. It means business. And uh, they are everywhere on this plant. Beautiful. Even though it's a small compact plant, this thing is productive. 
And then we have the Golden California Wonder Bell. So this is a, a yellow version of the Cal Wonder. Absolutely beautiful size bell peppers, still loaded up, not ripe yet. So we're gonna keep them on as long as we can. And uh, it's just absolutely laden with, with peppers as well. One of the things with this plant is it does take a little bit longer to ripen than most peppers. So um, you know, we, we won't be opposed to eating green peppers. It's just if we can get them to ripen, you know, the more the, the more the better when it comes to color. It's just, they taste sweeter, they taste better if you can let them ripen completely. Over here is a, uh, this is a um, ancho. This one's actually plenty ripe for us. We like to pick them slightly smaller. This one's ripe too, actually. Oh, look at that, beautiful. So uh, we got some anchos here. These are a really nice uh, Mexican grilling pepper. Love stuffing them and slicing them up, putting them in fajitas and stuff like that. But just a beautiful smoky flavor and absolutely incredible. This thing has produced so many peppers for us on this plant. And we've gotten about, uh, I think 12 so far, plus these two. So we're at about 14 peppers off of just this small little plant here. And there's so many more coming on. And then comes one of my favorite peppers of the whole garden this year. This one is absolutely just falling down and there's, there's no way to contain this plant without staking it up. But this is the Corno de Toro. Now this is the yellow version of the Corno de Toro. They'll turn a bright yellow, but these are also an Italian grilling pepper. And um, these things are absolutely monolithic. Just check out, check out the size on these. I mean, they are absolutely huge. The plant is completely overburdened. It's falling, it's falling over. And, uh, and like I said, I mean, this thing is just, these things are absolutely massive. And then we have the pepperoncini, one of our favorite pickling peppers that's out there. I love pepperoncini because it's uh, commonly used for, you know, if you've ever had a Greek salad, you, they pickle these peppers up, kind of a, a spicy, just a really sweet and spicy pepper and uh, one of our favorites. Then over here, we actually have what's called a Colorado pepper. Now the Colorado pepper is again, another Mexican pepper that we use in our cooking a lot here in the house. Um, and a Colorado pepper is commonly dried and used as, um, as like a, an aromatic in a lot of dishes. So these are still really small, but we picked, I think three peppers off this plant. The Colorado is another giant one that'll get seven, eight inches long, nice and fat. And then, uh, and then when you dry it out, it actually becomes super flat and paper thin and you use it for making uh, salsa roja, like a red salsa. And it's just a beautiful, uh, beautiful pepper all around. So we really love the, uh, the Colorado pepper. And then last but not least, I actually forgot, this one's actually kind of getting crushed by the, by the Corno de Toro. This is actually a poblano. So we've got a poblano pepper here, beautiful. It's got a ton of peppers on it and I, uh, I really, really love these peppers as well. Just a uh, very, uh, very similar to the ancho, but slightly larger in size than the ancho. The anchos are a little more petite, poblanos are a little larger. And so uh, we've got, got some nice sized peppers coming on and uh, these are great, nice and smoky, very similar in flavor to the, uh, to the ancho as well. So there you go. There's a complete tour of all the pepper plants that we're growing in our garden for the year of diversity. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I really hope that you were inspired to grow some of these varieties in your garden next year. I know that uh, we're definitely going to be growing a lot more diversity next year. Not necessarily the year of diversity, but this has really opened our eyes to just how many amazing varieties are out there and how many incredible flavors there are. We did set out on a mission this year to grow not only varieties we enjoyed eating, but also varieties that fit into the year of diversity. And we found that it didn't really affect the amount of food that we're putting on our table. Um, if anything, we've just gotten to eat more incredible food, taste a lot more incredible varieties, and um, it's kind of, like I said, it's opened our eyes to really what's out there. So I've had a great time growing these peppers. I can't wait to start harvesting a lot more of them and putting them in our food because they're so awesome to add to dishes, whether they're spicy or sweet. Um, they're just, uh, they're an awesome addition. And so I really recommend adding some more to your garden as well and seeing what's out there and, and what you like to grow. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. We'll catch you all on tomorrow's episode. Grow bigger, go home. Bye.